Peckety Peg by Audrey Wood, illustrated by Don Wood. He wants to try to show you the pictures, but I don't know how well they'll show up. Down the dusty roads and far away, a poor mother once lived with her seven children named Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Every day before the mother went to market, her children helped with all the chores. One morning when they were finished, the mother said, Because you are such good children, you may ask for anything you want, and I will bring it home from the market. The children were overjoyed and knew exactly what they wanted. Monday asked for a tub of butter. Tuesday asked for a pocket knife. Wednesday asked for a china pitcher. Thursday asked for a pot of honey. Friday asked for a tin of salt. Saturday asked for crackers. And Sunday asked for a bowl of egg pudding. The mother kissed her children goodbye and said, Now be careful and remember, don't let a stranger in and don't touch fire. The children locked the door behind her and began to play. Before long, a witch hobbled up the road pulling a heavy cart. She rapped at the window and called out, I'm Heckety Peg. I've lost my leg. Let me in. We can't, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday called. Mother told us not to let a stranger in. Heckety Peg took a pipe from her cape and stuck it in her mouth. Come now, sweet chicken, she called. All I need is a light for my pipe. Bring me a burning straw. We can't, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday called. Mother told us not to touch fire. Heckety Peg reached in her cart and pulled out a sack. I'm sure your mother won't mind, she said. Look, if you let me in and light my pipe, I'll give you this. Leaning out the window, the children looked into the sack. They couldn't believe their eyes. Gold, they cried, for a sack of gold will let you in and light your pipe. The children unlocked the door and let the witch in. They ran to the hearth and brought back burning sticks of straw to light her pipe. But when it was lit, Heckety Peg threw the pipe to the floor and shouted, Now I've got you! And with that, the witch turned the children into food. Monday became bread, Tuesday became pie, Wednesday became milk, Thursday became porridge, Friday became fish, Saturday became cheese, and Sunday became roast bread. Heckety Peg gathered up the food and loaded it in her cart. Without looking back, she pulled the cart down the road, over the bridge, through the town, across the field, and deep into the woods to her house. Soon the mother returned home carrying a large basket. In it were all the things her children wanted. A tub of butter for Monday, a pocket knife for Tuesday, a china pitcher for Wednesday, a pot of honey for Thursday, a tin of salt for Friday, crackers for Saturday, and a bowl of egg pudding for Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday, she called, but no one answered. The mother found the witch's broken pipe and burnt pieces of straw on the floor. Tears flowed from her eyes. Who has taken my children, she cried. A blackbird who had seen everything took pity on the mother and hopped down to the windowsill. Follow me, the bird chirped. It's Peggy Peg. She's lost her leg. They let her in. Grabbing her basket, the mother followed the blackbird down the road, over the bridge, through the town, across the field, and deep into the woods to the witch's hut. Peckety Peg had just sat down to supper and was about to take her first bite when she heard a loud knock at the door. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. You can't come in, said Heckety Peg. Your shoes are dirty. Then I'll take them off, the mother said, and so she did. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. You can't come in, said Heckety Peg. Your socks are dirty. Then I'll take them off, the mother said, and so she did. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. You still can't come in, said Heckety Peg. Your feet are dirty. Then I'll cut them off, the mother said, and she went away as if to do so. 
But instead, the mother hid her legs behind her and crawled back to the witch's door. Let me in, the mother called. I want my children back. When Hecate Peg looked down, she thought the mother had no feet, so she let her in. The witch pointed to the table. Here are your children, she said. If you can't get them right the first time, I'll eat them for my supper. Keeping her feet tucked beneath her, the mother crawled to the table. How would she ever guess which food was which child? In despair, the mother looked in her basket. Here are the things my children wanted, she thought, and now they will never have them. Hurry, said the witch, I'm hungry. The mother looked at the food on the table. Speak up, said the witch, my supper grows cold. Suddenly, the mother knew what to do. Taking the things from her basket, she said, I know my children by what they want. Bread wants butter, that's Monday. Pie wants knife, that's Tuesday. Milk wants pitcher, that's Wednesday. Porridge wants honey, that's Thursday. Fish wants salt, that's Friday. Cheese wants crackers, that's Saturday. And roast rib wants egg pudding, that's Sunday. Quick as a wink, the children turned back into themselves. They hugged and kissed their mother, then hugged and kissed each other. Jumping to her feet, the mother cried, I've got my children back, Hecate Peg. Now you'll be sorry you ever took them. She chased the witch around the hut, out of the woods, across the field, through the town, and onto the bridge. And Hecate Peg jumped off the bridge and was never seen again. I just want to show you some of my notes up close here. Um, these, so these are my notes. Now, I spent 30 something hours translating Hecate Peg into Quenya. I'm sure I didn't learn any Quenya from it. Uh, because I don't know if you can see, but it was basically just like I wrote out the words and I went morphine by morphine, broke down um, for each cloth, and then like tried to build the word. I've got notes about the grammar uh, and like tenses and case and aspects and all kinds of stuff that I don't really remember that well from linguistics. <laughs> but it was like our big ending project. I, I, we could do basically whatever we wanted. Um, and I decided to translate a picture book, which was kind of fun and really time consuming and exhausting and difficult because Quenya doesn't have a lot of the vocab that I needed, so I made up a lot of words. Um, specifically, the food words like butter was um, something like turn milk sweet, pie was fruitful bread. Uh, the days of the week, they don't have the same days of the week. So I actually wound up doing, um, they were called like first day, second day, third day, fourth day, instead of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so that was interesting. So uh, this is probably a bad translation, but it's a translation. Well, this obviously isn't. This is just a morphing box. Somewhere I have like a, the, what I wound up with, which is still broken down by morphing, but then it has like um, a nicer translation too. So, even though it's probably not a very good translation, I hope it still gets me some sort of speak cred, because I, I did it, and not that many people that I know have translated picture books into any of Tolkien's Elvish languages. So, I hope that counts for something. Another of my favorite picture books from when I was little is There's an Alligator Under My Bed by Mercer Mayer. There used to be an alligator under my bed. When it was time to go to sleep, I had to be very careful. Because I knew he was there. But whenever I looked, he hid or something. So I'd call mom and dad. But they never saw it. It was up to me. I just had to do something about that alligator. So I went to the kitchen to get some alligator bait. I filled a paper bag full of things alligators like to eat. I 
put a peanut butter sandwich, some fruit, and the last piece of pie in the garage. I put cookies down the hall. I left fresh vegetables on the stairs. I put a soda and some candy next to my bed. Then I watched and waited. Sure enough, out he came to get something. Then I hid in the hall closet. I followed him down the stairs. I followed him down the hall. When he crawled into the garage, I slammed the door and locked it. Then I went to bed. There wasn't even any mess to clean up. Now that there's an alligator in the garage, I wonder if my dad will have any trouble getting in his car tomorrow morning. I'll just leave him a note.